Hi, I'm Diane Urbans, owner of Urbans Greenhouse in Rudolph, Wisconsin, and I'm here today to show you how to plant a bird cage. We have our bird cage here. My husband has already put holes in the bottom so we can attach our zip ties. So we have a bottom on our bird cage. You just put it through, and he made four little slots for me so I can just zip tie this on and cut that off. You don't have to worry about the little bit of zip tie showing because once you have your plants in there, you're not going to see that anyway. And you also want to make sure you have a hole on the bottom of your of your cage also. When you get that in there, make sure you catch the edge of the cage and the base, otherwise it's not going to stay on there very good. And all bird cages are different. Sometimes we have to put a bird cage bottom on because the bottom has rotted. So we just take hardware cloth or chicken wire and cut it to fit and zip tie it on. The next thing you want to do is you want to make, you want to take your angel moss, which we sell at Urban's Greenhouse, and I like angel moss. You can also use sphagnum moss. I like angel moss better because it's prettier. And basically that's about why. It gets a beautiful green film on it throughout the summer. And you just take any opening you have in your bird cage. Some bird cages openings are smaller, some are larger. Plants love moss. So you don't, they will grow in moss and in dirt. So they love it. And you want to just keep making a, a wall so that you can put your dirt in here. Takes a little bit of time. You want to wet this moss. This moss is, that's this amount when it gets hydrated. So you want to put it in a bowl and let it hydrate so that it's wet to use when it's more damp. Mm -hmm. When you get so much in, then you'll start putting your dirt in the center or your soil mix. And you want to use a loose soil mix, not anything too heavy. Usually a good potting soil is all you need. And then you put that in there. Push it up against the side. It takes a little bit of time to do it, but it's absolutely beautiful when it's done. When you're looking for plants to plant in your bird cage, you want to make sure that you get plants that are not too much work like if you need to disbud them I've put verbena in them and they have verbena is beautiful in a bird cage but if you can't get at that plant to take off the old blossoms it's kind of a pain in the rump so you want to make sure you have easy plants with no disbudding and they have to be small leafed because they need to come out of these holes to make it look full and nice. And you can go up as far as you want with your bird cage sides. This is kind of a taller cage, so I'm gonna just go up and I'm gonna make one more level. And that way you can get more plants in there also. Because the more dirt and the more moss you have, the more space for your roots to grow. Now I like the height that it's at right now. For the plants that I'm going to put in here. Most mixes now these days come with a timed release fertilizer in them which is really good so you don't have to mess with that. All right now I think I've got enough soil in there. The plants that I have picked out 
This is bobine. This is our a new plant as of last year. And we actually really like this plant. It's in the, it's more of a succulent. And you could take off bottom leaves and it's not gonna hurt the plant. He happens to be very root bound right now. So I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm actually gonna chop at his roots because he's very root bound. and pick at it a little bit just to loosen that up. It helps them to be able to um, spread out. And we have to put it up here. And I chose this plant because it's a little bit taller of a plant because our bird cage is taller. If your bird cage is short, then you want to maybe just stay with a Oh, a little or like a wire vine or lobelia, which is this beautiful plant in that container. And you want to help them through a little bit until they get going because it's already big. You want to so that they can get through. I've actually done it with a coleus also. A tiny leafed coleus but in the beginning I've had to I've had to work the branches through and once you get the branches through then you don't really have any problems after that I like asparagus vine also in there because it's fine leafed and this one too is fairly root bound so we're gonna take and chop him up Pull him apart. And I kind of thinned him out earlier because he was really, really bushy. And he'll get bushy again. It's just easier to work with when they're a little bit smaller. And I'm going to put him on this side. and see how I'm pulling that through the cage to get it started. And it's a beautiful contrast with this solid flower or this solid leafed plant. And for the final plant, I picked out a vine because I want to hang this one. If you don't want to hang it, if you're just going to set it somewhere, you don't necessarily need a vine, but I like having vines so that it can cascade down. And I have started to cut off some of this vine for the fact that it's long and it's harder to weave in there and it will grow back again. Trimming annuals is is healthy for the plant. Not a ton off, but some. Okay. Now this, you wanna rip up his root a little bit. This will be the trickier one. Get them in place, and then gently try pulling the vine through. There are many different kinds of flowers or plants that you can put in your bird cages. We've also put perennials, like this bird cage over here has sedums, and that's about four years old now. We put them in an unheated garage for the winter, and then we bring them back out in April, end of April. Hydrate them very well because you don't water them in the winter time. And they just fluff right back up. Annuals like I'm putting in this cage, 
it will just be a one year thing, a one summer thing. Some people like the idea that they can keep their cage. Some people want to redo it every year. And we're going to put a little soil around the base of these. One, one rule of thumb is don't put too many plants in if your cage is small because they'll just crowd out and then they will not do well because there are lots of different sizes of cages. Now this one I'm going to put a chain on. This is a three-pronged chain and I'm going to hang it either from a tree in my backyard or a shepherd's hook something on that depending on the spot that you have for it some people have to put them in if it's a shady spot then you want to go with something that's more shady this one's going to be going in the sun uh, final thoughts on our bird cage we want to always make sure and water with a good fertilizer um, miracle grow because it's very important for root growth root stimulation when you've transplanted these and you've kind of taken that root and mangled it a little bit, um, it just helps the roots grow better. And as you can see, there's many, many different sizes of bird cages that we've done over the years. You can go from big to even really, really tiny ones. For more information on our bird cages, you can go to our website, urbansgreenhouse.com. Or you can go to our Facebook page and see classes and workshops that we've done with the bird cages and see other people's. Um, it's a lot of fun and we're here to walk you through it if you need extra help.